Hi everyone, Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com with 21-22 Panini Donner's Optic Basketball. Pick your team 17, four box break. Another third of the case right here. Big thanks to this group for making half. We did this one straight up. And this list right here is part of the promo too. So there you go. Sean Maddock, Last Bob Mojo. Sacramento Kings, good luck. All right, now... We'll go one, two, three for the left side, four, five, six for the right side. Remember I made those Wolverine scratch marks right there so we know they're from the same case. Five, one, two, three, four, five, six. So this we will save for break 18, which maybe, maybe mañana? Should be able to do it tomorrow. I don't know if we have any more optic basketball breaks after this. Maybe we have one more case. There, let's break 18 right here. You got that bag. All right. All right, good luck. We were talking a little Star Wars beforehand. Gila says, you know, I don't think I've seen more people patching the Star Wars fans. Yeah. It's gotten kind of, I guess... It's got, it's, there, there's like a lot of different camps now. As the, ser as the series has gone on, more different generations of people have gone in. You got a lot, a lot of layers of nerds. I mean, there's already, I feel like there's already like Marvel nerds, right? There's like, uh, I mean, especially everyone who, like the like the people who are really into the, the graphic novels are probably thumbing their, are probably, probably looking down their noses at the people who only like the movies, you know? So there's like that, there's that. But I mean, it's crazy though. You know, people will be able to, to tell you, like, what prototype helicopter was in Tony Stark's office in minute one, two, three of, <laughs> you know, the second Iron Man movie or something like that. Thirty Easter eggs you probably missed in the Avengers. <laughs> A lot of those too. A lot of that. I'm just, I'm just like, what? How did you? How did you even spot those? Or there'll be like people like there'll be people who are like, yeah, I watched, uh, I watched the Cassie and Andor trailer at 0.5 speed and caught every single <laughs> caught every single easter egg that you might have missed. It's impressive. Jalen Green base that's going to go to Sean TKO and the Rockets. Can we find some color, maybe some ink. Got an Evan Mobley. People in LA are uh, trying to be real estate detectives. Apparently, Russell Westbrook has put his house up for sale. Evan Mobley, Sean Maddock, and the Cavs gets the base, Evan Mobley. There's Kenyon Martin Jr. to 199 for the Rockets. And CJ McCollum, Portland edition. Um... That will be Diego and the Trailblazers. 30 out of 99. Really made a big difference on that Pelicans team when he was traded there. Ooh, ooh, a rated rookie hollow, Cade Cunningham. That's the kind of stuff Walter's looking for with the Pistons. Nice. I'm trying to eyeball it. I'm not, maybe the centering might be a little, but everything else looks kind of sharp. Maybe the edges are, 
Maybe up here, I don't know. Can't really say, but but you got one. There's Jason Preston, 89 out of 99 for the Clippers. He should go back to OKC, and what what's what would OKC send to the Lakers? <laughs> Not sure if uh, it's Kevin Durant to 79 for DY. I mean, I'm not sure what kind of return the Lakers can can realistically expect. We do left right randomizers here for for Westbrook. I mean, you'd have to not for a not for a one for one team to one team deal. You gotta start roping in extra teams, and it's harder for me to wrap my head around three team trades because that could really that could the permutations of that could be infinite. Probably are infinite. Are they infinite? It'd be finite. There's only so many teams and players, right, in the NBA. You know what I mean. Too many permutations. But if it's OKC, then they got to, I don't know, they got to rope in a, a third team. So, I mean, speculations. West, Westbrook trade speculation, those are easy clicks. I'll bet if I clickbaited the video, the title of this video, the the perfect Westbrook trade scenario, this might get this might get more clicks than the average Donner's Optic basketball video. Maybe if I include something about using the uh, the ESPN trade machine. Figure out all the deals, make all the money match. Why the Pacers wouldn't say no to this Westbrook trade? Like and subscribe. Yeah, that too. Anthony's right. Yeah, I mean, with with what the Thunder are trying to do, you know, with their sort of rebuild and youth movement and everything, I don't think Russell Westbrook, you know, fits on that team. Ben Simmons to one forty nine, and I think like, I feel like the idea of fit, you know, more than any other sport. You know, applies to basketball more than any other sport. Maybe soccer is pretty similar too, but, but like, I mean, Westbrook might be great on another team, but he's not a good fit with how the Lakers are constructed. You know, not a lot of not a lot of outside shooting. A lot of players doing having similar jobs. There's it's Queda again. Saw him in the previous break. This time, this one goes to Sean Maddock and the Kings. Rated rookie hollow. Then a shooter to 199 for Boston. It'll be for Ryan and the Celtics. And there's Aaron Wiggins. That'll be for OKC. Ryan Stewart with OKC. We got Norman Powell for Portland, 24 out of 59. Evan Mobley, the rookies. For Sean Maddock and the Cavs. Right. Yeah, and it, you know, yeah, and West Westbrook is just a little too old school, you know. 
he he he's he's sort of a dinosaur compared to how the how the league plays basketball now. You know, he needs a lot of ISO plays. He needs to have the ball a lot. He needs to volume shoot. I mean, when he's on, he's 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 really he's really fun to watch. I mean, you know, obviously he grew up in LA. He went to UCLA. You know, and a lot of, a lot of people, you know, maybe may not like him now as Lakers fans, but generally he's he's pretty beloved. Maybe not right now. But I think if, you, if push comes to shove, if you ask a lot of longtime Angelinos or Lakers fans, they'll tell you. I mean, privately, they're. I mean, they're definitely rooting for him. But if he's, you know, if he's a little stubborn, doesn't really change, doesn't really try to evolve it. You know, Carmelo is a great example. Carmelo Anthony, people thought, man, he's never going to change. He's always going to be this kind of player. Dot 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 dot. You know, but once he realized, hey, I'm not a, I'm not a starter anymore. You know. And if I want to stay in the league for another, you know, five, six, seven years, I've got to, I've got to change my approach, and I've got to settle for bench roles, and then people will put me on teams, you know. So once he started doing that, and I mean, he extended his career for a number of seasons. Well, I mean. That's almost every player in the NBA, right, Anthony? That's just not that's just not restricted to Westbrook. Every every sort of star player who drives into the basket, you know, will uh, will will look for the foul. Duncan Robinson for the Heat, Asa. Right, Eddie. Yeah, and I don't know if, at least right now, I don't know if if Westbrook has that sort of mentality. There's Isaiah Livers Hollow to make that change. I don't know, but new coach Darvin Ham, I think, has has a lot of a lot of leeway, and you know, has a lot of power to to bench players whenever necessary. Here's a Josh Giddy base. You know, and and new Lakers coach is going to demand a lot of defense being played as well. Ryan Stewart with OKC, and there's a Davion Mitchell Optographs rookie auto for Sean Maddock. Last spot mojo. The Kings are just sitting there, all the way to the last spot. Thirty-eight out of ninety-nine, seventy percent of the time, last spot mojo hits a hundred percent. There, there it is. He still has the, still has the ability to light it up. But I don't know. I mean, maybe last year was humbling. Maybe, maybe just, maybe he'll just kind of. I mean, I hope just kind of treat this season as a fresh start. Can't, the season can't be as bad as last year for Westbrook, right? Could it get worse? I don't think it could get worse, could it? There's Devonte Graham to 199. I mean, he's working hard. He's he's already at the Lakers training facility, which is just about 20 minutes north of us here. He's already working at the training facility. He's been working out. He's been playing basketball. He's, you know, pretending to be friends with <laughs> with uh, Patrick Beverly. You know, he's. He's been in every every press conference, so it's not like he's it's not like he's being uh, standoffish or grumpy. He's he's right there, you know. Logan, for the Raptors. So I gotta credit him for that. He's not shying away from. He hears people like me, pundits on on various sports networks, talk radio talk, and he he knows what he knows what he knows what's being said. So I don't know. We'll see. You know, there's been speculation about that, Eddie, that the, that the Lakers would do 
the, the, with the Lakers do a John Wall type thing and have him stay home for a season. I think, I mean, I think the answer is no. I don't think that's going to happen. <laughs> Because I don't think that the, you know, the Rockets could do it. Because I don't think the Rockets have, have, you know, really had a championship team. The, the, the Lakers don't have enough bodies. Like, if you don't have Russell Westbrook, you know, gobbling up at least 30, 35 minutes a game, like, who are you putting in there? I suppose, right, Anthony, Anthony's right. It, it, I guess it only makes sense... If the Lakers are winning games without him, you know, if they have a stretch of games where he's out or whatever, and if they could figure out a way to play without him, and he's just naturally just getting fewer and fewer minutes, then maybe that's the case. But I think to start the season, they're gonna they're either gonna try to trade him, which is becoming increasingly less likely, or they're just gonna they're just gonna keep playing him, you know. But I don't know how much of a distraction he Westbrook is, though. I mean, I think, I think maybe last year he was, but but I think I think Frank Vogel was sort of a lame duck coach anyway, so he wasn't really respected by a lot of players. I mean, respected as a person, I think, but maybe not as not in coaching power. So we'll have to see. This is going to be a big task for for the Lakers, and even then, even if everything goes right, it's going to be difficult for them to to go deep into the playoffs. Really, all this is a moot point. If Anthony Davis and LeBron James aren't healthy for big stretches of the season or for the playoffs, then the Lakers are sunk, and that's it. It doesn't matter if Westbrook's playing, playing well or not. It's the last auto right there. There's Aaron Gordon to 99. Yeah, I just don't think the Lakers have enough replacements or in the, enough depth to ask him to sit out. So they're kind of in a sort of in a rock and a hard place with him. There's Victor Oladipo to 149 for the Heat. That'll be for Asa. Another Jalen Green. That's for Sean, TKO. Usman Garuba also for Sean, that's the 79. Davion Mitchell, rated rookie base. Evan Mobley, base. That is for Sean Maddock and the Cavs. Yeah, I mean, I, th I think the Lakers are actively trying to find a trade partner for, uh, for Westbrook, but I think they're not going to really... I think every day that goes by, or it doesn't happen, I just think that becomes increasingly less likely. And if they want to try to trade him by the deadline, right, Chris, they got to, he has to keep playing. So to show that he's tradable by the deadline, and that's not until February. So the only thing they're in a rock and a hard place. They kind of have to play him. The only thing I can think of that, like, I kind of hope happens is that, remember that first middle year with the Thunder, where, like, it was made very clear that they still had Russ, they still had yeah. PG, or in their prime, like, that Mel wasn't going to be that guy. And Mel, like, did never thought, I'm a bench guy. I'm not, I'm not a bench guy. That's what I was saying earlier, that, that you got to, if, if he gets, like, that mellow mentality, then maybe. I'm kind of hoping that he's, like, there's you no, know, I reach a point in my career where I definitely think I can help. I'm, I'm in my hometown. I'm with the team I rooted for as a kid. And this is it. I mean, Joshua I'm Primo is your final autograph, ladies and gentlemen. That's for Eric K. and the Spurs. There you go, gang. Let me do that left-right randomizer, and then we'll get to our next thing. Joshua Cousin. Joshua Cousin. So left-right randomizers for those cards. 
Let's roll it, let's randomize it. Six and a five, 11 times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, and 11 the final time. Right side cards will get him. So all the right side cards will get these all-star dual player cards. There you go, gang. I'm Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com. Uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for breaking with us. And we'll see you next time for the next one.